All right, in this lesson, I'll be taking you through the process of installing Ruby on your Mac OS machine, and we'll be doing it with an application called RVM, which is short for Ruby Version Manager. Basically, Ruby Version Manager allows us to install one or more versions of Ruby on our, compu on our computer in their own separate contained directory. So uh, surprisingly, installing Ruby by itself on a Mac is a more difficult process than I would imagine it being, especially considering Ruby is very famous for its simplicity. In fact, the process for installing Ruby on a Windows machine, in my opinion, is much simpler. So if you don't understand all of the commands that I'm doing in this lesson, that's totally fine. Just make sure you copy them a character for character and just follow along and execute as I proceed through the installation process. All right, so I'll begin by opening a brand new terminal window. Here it is, and let me expand it. And believe it or not, Ruby is actually installed by default on Mac OS machines. The reason that we don't want to use the default system one is because it's usually out of date. We can actually check that Ruby is installed by writing Ruby in our terminal and then a space and then a hyphen or a dash followed by V. Basically, this part, the last part, the dash V, is what's called a flag, and it allows us to modify the command that we sent to the computer. And all that we're doing here is asking Ruby for its current version. So when I execute this, we can see in my case, it says Ruby 2.0.0. This is actually a version that was released, as you can see, way back in 2015, this latest revision. So it's at least one year old, perhaps even more when you consider its first revision. Now keep in mind your exact Ruby numbers here may be a little bit different. Your version may be a little bit behind or a little bit ahead, but regardless of what it is, it's usually at least a year or a year and a half behind what the latest and current version of Ruby is. So we don't want to be using the system one. In addition, we don't want to be doing things like modifying that core system installation. We want everything to be separate and in its own folder so that we can go ahead and play with it without any kind of worry. So in order to install a separate version of Ruby, we're going to be using the uh, Ruby version manager, which is called RVM. So I have it open here in a separate tab in my Chrome browser. Let me open that up for you. So here we have it. So in your web browser of choice, minus Chrome, you can go to rvm.io, and you can see here Ruby version manager RVM. It's a command line tool which allows you to easily install, manage, and work with multiple Ruby environments. That basically means multiple Ruby sandboxes uh, where we can have different installations of Ruby and so on and so forth. In this case, we don't need to try out different versions of, versions of the language. We're just going to get the most latest one as of November 2016, which is 2.33, but we first need to install this RVM to make it possible. So on this main page, if I scroll down a bit, you'll see this install RVM bit. You can actually ignore this first part up here and just copy this line of code here that begins with curl. What this is basically doing is using the command line to reach out to this website. You can see it right here, get.rvm.io, and basically download the file uh, from the terminal. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to go back to my terminal right here, and I'm just going to paste the command and press enter. This should be a fairly quick pr uh, process. It's basically going to reach out and download the RVM package manager from uh, that website, or in this case, it looks like GitHub. All right, so you can see here that it's successfully completed. We're back to being prompted. Now, there's one thing that we need to do here. So what it's going to do is install RVM in a separate directory. We can see it's right here. Uh, under my users folder, under my username, it's in a hidden directory called uh, .rvm. That dot at the beginning of a directory basically indicates that it's a hidden directory, which means you're not going to be able to see it uh, from your finder, for example. You can only access it specifically through the command line or by revealing those hidden files and folders on your Mac. So when a Mac launches or when a terminal launches, it's not going to know that it has to look within that RVM folder in order to look for the program called RVM. What we basically want to do is be able to open the terminal and just start writing RVM commands, for example, to install Ruby, without having to direct ourselves to the proper directory where it's installed. So the easiest way to do this is to modify what's called our bash profile file. That's basically a file that tells the terminal where to look uh, whenever you type in a command. If a command is not found in the current directory in which you're currently in, it's just going to look in these extra directories uh, within your bash profile file. So what I can do here is type open space, then the tilde symbol, which is the shift key plus the character that's on the left of the one on your keyboard. Then you want to put a slash and then dot bash underscore profile. 
That tilde slash basically just means the home directory, and within that home directory, we have a hidden file called .bash profile. It is hidden because we know that because it has that dot in front of it. Now, when we execute this, the Mac is going to open your default text editor, and it's going to open the bash profile file. It's going to look something like this. It may not have anything in it, which is perfectly fine. Just at the very end, you can go uh, maybe, maybe create a line break or two and type this source tilde again slash let me see if I can blow this up actually there it is source space tilde slash again home directory dot rvm that's as you know is the hidden directory where rvm is installed slash scripts which is another interior or subdirectory within rvm and slash rvm and then that's it so this is basically the directory within that secret directory where the RVM app lies. So whenever we type RVM after this point in the terminal, it's going to know that it can look in here and it's going to be able to find it. And we don't have to navigate to this folder over and over again whenever we, we launch the terminal. So what I want to do is save this file, save it, then we can quit your text editor, whatever it is. Let's go back to the terminal. Now at this point, we still have to load that file into memory. The easiest way to do this actually is to close the terminal and open it again. But what we can also type here is source uh, tilde slash dot bash profile. So basically the exact same command as we just did, but with a source in front of it instead of open, that basically is just going to look for that file, reload it into memory. So now uh, RVM is now available to us immediately no matter where we are on the computer. So for example, what I can do is type RVM and you can see here the documentation for it is going to pop up. If I scroll up a bit, you can see here is the license for RVM. Here it's listing the website. Here are all the available commands. So RVM is successfully installed and it's available to us at any folder or within any directory on our Mac machine. So now that we have RVM installed, we want to use RVM to install a version of Ruby. In this case, it's going to be the only one we're going to use, but if you're interested, you can also use RVM to install multiple versions of Ruby and each one will be self-contained. So what I want to do here is write RVM, which is our program, and then the command is called install space, and here's where we give the number or the version of Ruby that we want to install. In this case, I'm going to be using the latest version of Ruby as of November 2016, which is 2.3.3. I keep in mind Ruby usually uh, releases new versions every uh, December, so usually around late December, you, you should probably be seeing something like 2.4. I recommend if you're following along just to play it safe to use this version. There shouldn't be that many drastic differences between 2.3.3 and 2.4, and that'll allow you to follow along with the course and guarantee that everything is going to be uh, prone or less prone to error, rather. So I'm going to execute this command, and RVM is going to go ahead and install the Ruby version uh, 2.3.3. This process, surprisingly, takes a very long time, especially if it's your first time running it. Uh, and by very long time, I mean potentially 10 to 15 minutes. That's what I've seen in the past. So what I'm going to do right now is just leave this running a bit. I'll still keep the video recording so, so you can follow along with the process, but by all means, you can uh, skip forward if you're following along uh, or just execute it on your computer and take a break. This certainly is a fairly long process. Uh, it has to download the materials and then compile them and then do, do all kinds of technical stuff to get it running. So I'll pause the video or rather not pause the video, but pause my speaking at this point, and I'll join back when this entire installation is complete.
There it is. Okay, that took a little while. We can see it's a pretty extensive process. Configuration, post-configuration, compilation, installation. We can see here as well, this is the directory where it was installed within my users folder within that secret .rvm directory. We have Ruby's and then finally the version of Ruby that we requested is self-contained within that directory. You'll also notice it says here Ruby was built without documentation to build it run this command. We'll be running that command shortly in order to uh, install all of the documentation that comes with Ruby. For now though, I want to try another command. I'll begin first with clearing my entire screen so we can get rid of all this output. That's the clear command. There we go. What I'm going to do now is do rvm use 2.3.3. So what this basically does, if you open up a brand new terminal and write this command, is it activates that version of Ruby. We can see it says here from the same directory where we just saw that it's installed, and that allows us to use it. However, what we really want to do here is to set this version of Ruby that we installed as the default. So this one always takes precedence over the one that's installed by default on a Mac, which is the outdated one. We saw that a few minutes ago. It was 2.0.0 on my computer. So the command that we can run, and we only have to do it once unless we want to change the default, is to write rvm space dash dash default. So we're setting the default version of Ruby. Let me blow this up, in fact. Oops. Okay, maybe that made things a little bit worse. There it is. rvm dash dash default use space, and then we're going to write the version that we want to use, which is again going to be 2.3.3. Now let's execute it. And now what we've done is set this uh, by default. So now whenever we launch the terminal, we're going to have that be the version of Ruby that is activated and that we use whenever we run something like a Ruby file. At this point, let's go ahead and run that command that installs the documentation, which is rvm docs generate dash ri. That's just going to get the Ruby documentation. Perhaps we'll use it later in the course, perhaps not. But this is just fetching it. And afterwards, what we're going to do is execute that familiar ruby-v command to check that the current version of Ruby, which is 2.3.3, is what shows up. And afterwards, we'll run an additional experiment, which is closing the terminal and reopening it, and then running that familiar ruby-v command again, just to show you that it's going to default to this latest installed version instead of the system one. So let's just wait for this documentation download to finish up. All right, so now we're back. So what I want to do right, right now is to write ruby-v. And we can see right now it's giving me the version I just installed with RVM, which is 2.3.3. Perfect. What I'm actually going to do right now, as promised, is to quit the terminal. You can also use the keyboard shortcut command Q. And at this point, I'm going to launch a fresh instance of the terminal. There it is. And if I do ruby-v, you'll see here it is giving me, again, that version that I just installed. So now that's going to be the default. Our standard Mac installation version for me was 2.0.0 is still safe. It hasn't been removed. We're simply going to be using this new one that we've installed with the Ruby version manager. And at this point, we are ready to go. So the next step in our installation process is going to be installing our text editor. That's where we're actually going to be writing the Ruby code. And we're actually going to be executing those files both from within our text editor, which is called Atom, and also within the terminal. So uh, if you thought you were going to get lucky and not have to play around with this confusing terminal, anymore. The bad news is we're still going to have to play around with it in order to run some of our Ruby files in the future. But that was the installation process for Ruby, and in the next lesson, we'll be downloading and setting up Atom on our Mac computers.